all keeping well and healthy and safe and having a good week. I don't know if you realize this, but tomorrow is actually a public holiday. If you're back at school, maybe if you're in grade seven, you may have noticed, but for the rest of us, it's just another day at home. But I don't think we should let this day tomorrow just be another day at home because it's actually an important public holiday. It's the public holiday that we call Women's Day. Now, sometimes people think Women's Day is the same as Mother's Day and you must give the women presents. Um, I'm not going to say no to presents. If you want to give me presents, that's fine. But that's not really what the day is about. The Women's Day is the day that we remember the women who were really brave and stood up for what wasn't right. They marched to Parliament, even though that could have been really dangerous, and they said, this is not right. We need to change things so that things can be fair for everyone. So those women, all those years ago that marched, they were really brave. And they remind me of somebody in the Bible who was really brave as well. We can find her story in the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible. We start with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and then after that is Judges. And if you look in Judges in chapter 4, and you look through chapter 4, the big number 4, until you get to verse 4, small number 4, you will see the name of this very brave woman. And her name was Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, who was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came to her to have their disputes decided. So this lady, Deborah, was a judge. In those days, they didn't have kings yet. This was before the time of King Saul and King David. Um, but they had judges, and these judges were there to settle any disputes. So if you bought something from that person and then it didn't work and you wanted your money back, you could go to the judge and they could um, decide what was the fair thing to do. Kind of like the law court of today. So Deborah was a judge. But if you read, listen carefully, you will notice that there was also something important about her. It says, Deborah, a prophetess. So a prophetess is a lady who heard the word of God. God spoke to her and gave her directions and explained to her what the people of Israel should be doing. Now, unfortunately, at that time, the people of Israel weren't in a good place. They hadn't been listening to God. And what usually happened when they didn't listen to God was that, that God allowed them to be taken over by other people. Um, other nations could uh, fight against them and, and be victorious. And so they were being bothered at that time by a man called Sisera. And Sisera had, he was famous because he had 900 chariots. In two different places they mention that Sisera had 900 chariots. And these were obviously very scary things to have at that time. And he was going to launch an attack against the Israelites with his 900 chariots. And uh, Deborah said to Barak, who was the um, leader of the Israel army, that God was with them, that he'd heard their cry for help. He heard that they were unhappy about how Caesarea was kept attacking them, and he was going to help them. Now, Deborah was such a strong leader that Barak was scared to go into battle without her. He actually said, I'm not going to go fight them unless you come with me. I'm too scared. And so Deborah, a woman, it's an unusual story for that time, but she as a woman went with Barak to go and fight against Caesarea. Now Caesarea may have had 900 chariots, but the Israelites had something far better than 900 chariots. They had God on their side. And because Deborah was listening to God and following the instructions of God, they knew what was the right time to attack. And God told them at this particular day, you must get 10,000 men and go to this particular position. So Barak got together the 10,000 men. Deborah went with him and she told him now is the time to uh, approach the other army. 
Now Cicero with his 900 chariots had arranged this area with a nice long big flat plain and he was going to attack the Israelites across this area. But just at that moment, and this is where God's timing comes in, just at that moment there was thunder and lightning and a mighty downpour of rain. And what happened was the big flat plain where the chariots were, that was flooded out and it became all muddy. And the 900 chariots all got stuck in the mud and they couldn't advance any further. And so all their chariot drivers had to get out of their horse-drawn chariots, leave their horses behind and they had to run for it. And Barak with his 10,000 men chased them off until they were gone. And Cezira himself actually was killed by another uh, woman called Jael. Um, she was very clever and got the right opportunity and the right moments to get rid of him too. And so at the end of all of this, Deborah sang this song of Deborah, which you can find in Judges chapter 5. And it says, On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinium, sang this song. When the princes in Israel take the lead, when the people willingly offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. O oh God, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. So you can hear from those words how Deborah didn't say, Ah, oh, I'm such a good leader, but she praised God. She gave the glory to God and said, We, I know we won this victory because God was on our side and he told us the right time to attack, the right place to be. And without him, we couldn't have done it. And then... Um, Further on, you read about Deborah, and it says in verse 21, So may all your enemies perish, O Lord. May they who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. And then the land had peace 40 years. So Deborah uh, didn't then decide to become this power-hungry leader and say, Oh, I was so good. I helped everyone defeat uh, Caesarea and his, his soldiers. But she actually ruled, did a really good job of ruling the land and there was peace for 40 years while she was in charge. And so she was a really good leader, an example of a good leader from the Old Testament in our Bible. And if you look carefully around you today, you will find there are many female leaders still today. Um, maybe your mom or your cousin or your um, sister or your aunt is a good leader. And you can be a good leader too. All you need to do is show other people the right way to live. Follow God's commands so that other people see you and see that you're different, that you don't try and do everything for yourself, but that you have uh, something more important in your life, and that is following God's word. Um, somebody more important in your life, and that is Jesus, and he helps you to make the right decision. And by by you making the right decision based on what Jesus would do, you can also be a good leader. Um, just like Deborah was, she listened to God. She followed what God wanted her to do and she became a good leader that way. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for the story of Deborah and how it showed that you didn't just choose men to be good leaders, but you also had female leaders in, in your story in the Old Testament and help us to admire and, and appreciate the good strong female leaders around us and thank them for what they're doing and help us to be good leaders too and do what you would like us to do. Thank you Lord Jesus and please be with those people who are not well at the moment, who are sick or injured and help them to get better and be with their families too. Thank you Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.